What's going on? Vincent Rapisardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. In this YouTube video, I want to talk about the Giants' offensive line. So it's been a topic of discussion lately, obviously. The Giants went ahead and they took Georgia offensive tackle Andrew Thomas fourth overall. They took UConn offensive tackle Matt Pert in the third round, and then Shane Lemieux, the Oregon offensive lineman, in the fifth round. While talking about the offensive line, the topic of Nate Solder came up. And a Giants fan that I follow on Twitter said, Nate Solder's the worst left tackle in the NFL, and that's why Andrew Thomas needs to move to left tackle immediately day one. And I said in my previous YouTube video, I think it would be best if they started Andrew Thomas at right tackle and then ease him over when he's ready. The Giants are a developing team. There's no need to really rush anything. Maybe in camp, he will prove that he's ready day one. But for the time being, I don't see any need to rush it, especially with Nate Solder proving to be a serviceable average left tackle. Do I think Nate Solder is a top five left tackle? No, but I think that he's serviceable. I think he's an average left tackle where you can get away with playing him the beginning of the year and then moving Thomas over at some point. I know that a lot of people are not fans of Nate Solder. That's kind of been an ongoing trend with many left tackles in recent Giants history, whether that's Will Beatty, a lot of fans were not crazy about him. Then Eric Flowers was supposed to be the savior. Fans were obviously not very happy with how that went. Nate Solder comes in, paid $64 million to fix that Eric Flowers problem, and people are still not happy. When it comes to Solder, right, last year, I know a lot of people are going to point to a lot of sacks and pressures, but there also needs to be context added to those sacks and pressures. Overall, Nate Solder had a pass block win rate of 87%, which was right around average, the same as Tyron Smith and the same as Jason Peters. In 2018, he was one of nine left tackles to not allow a pressure rate higher than 5%. So overall, he's been a fairly average left tackle since joining the Giants. I feel like with social media today and all these debate shows like Undisputed and First Take, there's been a culture created where either someone's amazing or they're terrible. And we can't ever say someone's just kind of average and serviceable because it won't get us enough retweets or it won't get us enough likes. My goal, again, with all my content is just to bring out facts and to be as unbiased as possible. So with Solder, I went back and looked at the 14 sacks that he allowed. I know, how exciting. But I went back and looked at the average time to throw on those sacks. And of those 14 sacks, the average time to throw was 3.2 seconds. The average time to throw, according to ProFootballReference.com last year, was 2.5 seconds. So again, I know the sack totals look terrible. That's a lot of sacks given up. But at the same time, we have to add context to those sacks. I mean, if a quarterback stood in the pocket for 5 seconds, right, and he took a coverage sack, is that really on the offensive line? I also went back and looked at some of the strip sack fumbles that Daniel Jones had. He had 10 last year. Six of those 10 were rewarded to Nate Solter. And on those 10 strip sack fumbles, the average time to throw was 3.1 seconds. Again, way over the average of two and a half seconds. A fumble inside of the pocket is a sack. So Jones having those fumble issues, right? It's probably going to inflate the sack total a little bit as well. In general, I know it's a hot take to say that Giants offensive line is terrible, but they actually ranked 12th in pass block win rate last year at 61%. They were also one of nine teams to throw the ball at least 600 times. The other eight teams averaged 43 and a half sacks. The Giants had 43 sacks. So they were right on par with all those other teams that are throwing the ball a lot. Because let's be honest, there's a good chance if you're dropping back to pass more and you're throwing it more, you might get sacked more. There was also a game against the Arizona Cardinals last year where Daniel Jones was sacked eight times. And you would say, wow, that's, that's a bad offensive line, right? On those eight sacks, the average time to throw was 3.34 seconds. Two and a half seconds is the average time to throw in the NFL. And let me also say this because I feel like it needs to be said. I think Daniel Jones is a promising young quarterback, but to ignore his lack of pocket awareness when talking about the offensive line, I don't think that's fair when talking about the offensive line, right? I mean, if Daniel Jones is going to hold on to the football longer, if he's going to have these fumble issues and it's going to affect the overall statistics of the offensive line and make them look worse, I don't find that fair. And Jones in general, the fumbling issue was real. When it came to expected points added, also known as EPA, Daniel Jones had an EPA of negative 2.88 on fumbles and a negative EPA of 2.42 on interceptions. So it wasn't just about the total number of fumbles, but it was the value of when he was fumbling, where he was fumbling, and what those fumbles were turning into. So I'm not here to tell you that Nate Solder is amazing and should be given an extension, but can we just admit that maybe he's just average and not the worst, not the best, just kind of average? And guess what? It's okay to start an average left tackle. And while the offensive line certainly isn't perfect, the reason the Giants use three of their top five draft picks on the offensive line, let's also add a little bit of context and be a little bit fair here and understand that the offensive line isn't to blame for everything. So that's all I got. Vincent Rapisardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Vince Rapisardi. I also have a podcast, the Big Blue Unbiased podcast that is on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and like everywhere else. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again. Vincent Rapisardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. Um.